I'm in touch with a lot of different types of genres of music, and now I incorporate that in my album. <laughs> Good Girl Gone Bad, I know a lot of people are probably wondering why that title, but this album, for me, it, I feel really liberated. After I recorded it and I listened to it, it makes me feel so good. Like, I wanted to do everything my way, you know, and it's kind of like a bad girl attitude. I got a little rebellious, I got a little attitude, and the sound of the album is really, really edgy, and I felt like the title matched my personality now, um, the way I approached the album, and the sound of the album. Hold on one second. <laughs> is it Amanda? I was kidding. I was, I was trying to like dish it. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Let's go a little bit further back. Let's talk about um some of the music you listened to when you were um living in Barbados. And actually, you know what? I want to know about the first time you knew that you were in love with music. Okay. If you can recall that specific memory. Hmm. Can I tell you the day, time, or day time? Uh, <laughs> you know, like, so, <laughs> Um, let me see. I first fell in love with music. All right, let me start. Growing up, I used to listen to a lot of reggae, as I mentioned earlier. Bob Marley, always. He's one of my favorite and will always be one of my favorites. Uh, you know, Sean Paul from back in the day, even before he had a deal. You know, um, a lot of different reggae artists, Booji Branton. And, you know, then I started exploring on my own because that's what my mom would listen to. Then I explored on my own, you know, I, I love Destiny's Child. I was in love with Mariah Carey. And that's when I was like, wow, I want to do this. I want to be just like that. I want to be on TV making videos and I want to make music. And I fell in love with the music. I had passion for music and I had my own taste. And I had to be like seven years old when I decided and I knew what I wanted to do. Um, you seem to be like, you know, you have a very developed personality. Like, oh, you thank are, you. you are, right? Thank you. What were you like when you were younger? You seem like you didn't really like necessarily like follow the crowd, like you did your own thing. Absolutely. When I was younger, one thing about me, I didn't care to have the group of friends. I didn't care to be the most popular girl in school. I, I mean, I was fine with being on my own. You know, friends is always great. Company, I love company. But if it's silly, if it's a silly crowd, I don't care to be part of it. I always felt like I was a leader. I had to do what, what I felt was perfect for me. Like I didn't do it because it looked cool to somebody else. I think that's a little Play-Doh. And I've always had that attitude, even from a little girl. When did you start like singing like professionally? Not, well, not professionally, but like when did you start singing and say, you know, this is something that I think I actually want to do as a career? Woo. Like how old were you? When I was between the age of, I had to be like seven or eight years old. When I knew what I wanted to do, I started singing in the shower, like, and I, I mean, I was motivated by a lot of different things, a lot of different musicians, and a lot of the young musicians too motivated me, because I'm like, if they can do it, then I could do it too. And I remember, this is so funny to me, but I would just say, crazy stuff like I'm gonna be a singer and I, like I just had it out there like I knew it was gonna happen but really and truly it didn't have to so it's just crazy to me when I think about it when I remember those days and now I'm here sitting in the seat of what I always dreamed of doing it's insane to me well you talked about singing in the shower what was your favorite song to sing in the shower my favorite song to sing in the shower was always Visions of love. Uh, love Mariah Carey. Love her. That was it. Um, you spoke a little bit about, uh, like, you know, being individual um, and not necessarily like chasing popularity, but at the same time, you're a very attractive person. Thank you. Um, and you were a beauty queen. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, in Barbados, we don't have prom. So instead, we have something called a school pageant. And my school was. It was called Common Mirror, so it would miss a Mr. Common Mirror. And I, I won one year. One year I entered just for fun, you know, my, my friends were all like, you should enter, you should enter. And I was like, whatever. I entered it and, you know, I didn't know I was going to win. I thought I was going to come in fourth place, actually. Four of six girls 
And I just had number four there. After the night show, I went upstairs to my dressing room and I'm like, Mom, I'm not going to win. I'm, I don't even feel like going back on stage for the, the announcement. But I, went, I didn't even know that I was going to win. I remember the, I felt so great. I felt so great. But it was fun. I did it for fun. Um, I want to talk about getting discovered. Like, how are you discovered? Um, <clears throat> Uh, I was introduced to a producer, a couple of producers actually, through one of my friends in school, and in, in Barbados actually. He was vacationing there, and I went to his hotel and I sang for him, and he invited me to the States to his studio to do some recording work on a demo. So we worked on a demo for over a period of a year, but um, you know, in and out of Barbados to America. And, then we finally had it together, we finished it, and we sent it out to a few labels, and Dev Jam was the first label to call back. They were the most enthusiastic about everything, so we went with them. <laughs>